Hello everyone, I hope all of you are good and I am back with the fourth video of the video series on class 8 maths rational numbers and in this video we are going to learn about representation of rational numbers on number line. We all are aware of the number line. This is how it looks. It consists of all the integers, the positive, the negative and zero. But nowhere we see the rational numbers as in if I have to find out where is 2 by 3, I can't see it. Where is 4 by 5, I can't see it, right? So how do we represent these numbers on the number line? That is what we are going to learn now. So please pay attention. Let's get started. Now when we talk about representing rational numbers, let us take a few very common examples of rational numbers and try to locate them on this number line. So here we have a magnified version of the number line. So let us say, let us say that we want to represent the number 1 by 2 on the number line. So 1 by 2 is definitely a rational number. Now what do you think? Where does 1 by 2 will be where will it be located now 1 by 2 is half that is it is less than 1 but it is more than 0 so it, it is will be located somewhere between 0 and 1 somewhere between this place so how do we locate exactly where 1 by 2 is 1 by 2 means that out of two halves one half one half out of two halves so what we do is this region between 0 and 1 we divide this region into two equal parts this is one part this is another part so each part is 1 by 2 basically this point becomes 1 by 2 now did you understand why because we have to calculate 1 by 2 that means one part of two parts so two parts should be total out of that one part so what we did is between 0 and 1 we divided it into two parts so now you have total two parts and out of two parts one part so that is this much so one part out of two parts so that is 1 by 2 so this is where 1 by 2 is located now let us try to locate the next rational number that is 1 by 3. Now again where will 1 by 3 be located? So 1 by 3 will again be located between 0 and 1. So how do we locate it now? So 1 by 3 means what? One part out of three parts. So now what we will do is we will divide this region between 0 and 1 into three equal parts like this 1, 2, 3. So now you have three equal parts. So that means this part, the first part will be 1 by 3. So the second, this part is also 1 by 3, but from 0, how much it will be? 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3. So that means this point will be 2 by 3. What will be this point? This would be 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3. That is 3 by 3. So 3 by 3 is equal to 1. Right? So in this way, you can locate this point as 1 by 3. So we could locate the point 1 by 3. Let us now again look, try to locate another rational number that is 1 by 4. Now can you guess what are we going to do this time? Absolutely. We are going to divide this region into 4 equal parts like this. 1, 2, 3 and 4. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4. We have divided it into four equal parts. So basically whenever you have to represent a rational number, what you do is whatever the denominator is, so you divide this region into that many small parts. So here when you divide it into four parts, what will be this point? This is one part out of four parts. So it is one by four. What will be this point? It is one, two. That is two parts out of four parts. This would be three parts out of four parts. This point would be 4 parts out of 4 parts. 4 by 4 is nothing but 1. Similarly, if you move on, so this point would be 5 by 4. This point would be 6 by 4. This point would be 7 by 4. And this point again would be 8 by 4, which would be 2. And so on. So that's how we are able to locate the point 1 by 4 on the number line. So see, this is how we exactly need to locate rational numbers on the number line. So you see that you observe something very interesting that before this, we always thought that on the number line we have a 0 and then after that we immediately have 1. 
So always we used to think that one is what that comes after zero. But now when we represent all these numbers, we get to see that there are a lot of rational numbers that are lying between zero and one. One by two, one by three, two by three, two by four, three by four, one by four. So there are so many numbers, not only these, but actually there are many, many more rational numbers that exist between these two numbers. Not only these two numbers, but between any two uh, integers there exists a huge number of rational numbers. So let us try to locate 10 by 8 on the number line. So this is like an exercise. So we will try to understand the concept even better. Now what do you think we should do when we want to locate 10 by 8? So as I have always mentioned that first focus on the denominator. What is the denominator? It is 8. That means 10 parts out of 8 parts. So that means total should be 8 parts. So we will divide this region between 0 and 1 into 8 equal parts like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So now it has been divided into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 equal parts. So now what will be this first part? This is just one part out of 8 parts. So this would be 1 by 8. This will be 2 by 8. This will be 3 by 8, this will be 4 by 8, 5 by 8, 6 by 8, 7 by 8. Finally, this would be 8 by 8. Now, if you continue on the same lines, so what will you get? This would be 9 by 8, this is 10 by 8, 11 by 8, 12 by 8 and so on. So, we had to locate what? We had to locate 10 by 8. So, this is where 10 by 8 would be located. So you see this is the approach that we need to follow in order to locate any rational number on the number line. Now you might say that these were pretty simple numbers. So you just took examples of numbers like 1 by 2, 1 by 4, 1 by 8, 1 by 3. So they were easy. So how do we represent complicated rational numbers like 25 by 17, 31 by 100 or minus 675 by 4000? How do we when represent these numbers on the number lines because these numbers are like huge numbers so if it is 25 by 17 i have to divide it into 17 equal parts so how do i go about it so let us try to understand more about the rational numbers so that we are able to locate them easily on the number line so even before we talk about the number line let us first try to locate the rational numbers let us first try to understand where are they located for example when i took examples of 1 by 2 1 by 3 1 by 4 we knew that these numbers lie between 0 and 1 but let us say if i give you a ratio where the number lies between uh, 10000 and 10001 so in that case it is not feasible to start making you know uh, separation from 0 to 10,000 that is not feasible so we first first of all we should have some idea about where that rational number is located between which numbers between which integers those rational numbers are located so first we will understand how do we locate rational numbers Now when you look at this number line in detail, you would see that between any two integers there exist countless rational numbers. So that's surprising, right? That there exists countless rational numbers between any two rational numbers. So not only the integers, like it is not only that between 0 and 1 and 1 and 2 you have infinite rational numbers, between any two rational numbers you can have infinite number of rational numbers. Quite surprising, I agree, but let us try to see if that's really true or not. So let us try to find out rational numbers that exist between rational numbers. Let's say how many rational numbers would exist between 0 and 1. Let us try to find out. So let us think in these lines. Now already in one of the previous slides, we saw that between 0 and 1, you would have 1 by 2 between 0 and 1 by 2 you would have something like 1 by 4 you would also have something like 1 by 3 so 1 by 2 1 by 3 1 by 4 these are certain rational numbers which exist between 0 and 1 in fact we saw it in one of the previous slides right but do you think that these are the only rational numbers existing between 0 and 1 no that's not the case let's see 
Now 1 by 2, I can very well write 1 by 2 as 10 by 20 because 10 by 20 would actually mean 1 by 2, right? Now when I write 10 by 20 as 1 by 2, what about these numbers like 11 by 20, 12 by 20, 13 by 20, 14 by 20. So what happens to these numbers? Where are they located? So from 10 by 20 to say 20 by 20 because by the time you reach like this 18 by 20 then you will have 19 by 20 then you have 20 by 20. So 20 by 20 is actually 1. So this is 1 and these numbers they all lie between 1 by 2 and 1. That means in this portion you have all these numbers 11 by 20, 12 by 20, 13 by 20, 14 by 20. So how many do you have here? So we already got some 9 rational numbers here. So there are some 9 rational numbers between 1 by 2 and 1. Okay, once again, the same 1 by 2 can also be written as 4 by 8. Again, they mean the same thing, right? So now when I say that, that means what about these numbers 5 by 8, 6 by 8, 7 by 8, 8 by 8. So 8 by 8 is again 1. So this one is 1. That means again between 1 by 2 and 1 you have all these numbers 5 by 8, 6 by 8, 7 by 8. So again in the same place. So they are how many? So here you get 3 more rational numbers. Again, the same 1 by 2 can be written as 100 by 200. And here we can start from 101 by 200, 102 by 200, 103 by 200 and so on till you reach 198 by 200, 199 by 200. And finally 200 by 200. So this 200 by 200 is 1. So here how many numbers do you have? You have almost 99 rational numbers here in this case. So how many rational numbers we actually found out right now? 9 plus 3 plus 99. These are all numbers between 1 by 2 and 1. And this is not all. There are even more number of ways by which you can write 1 by 2. For example, 1 by 2 can also be written as 6 by 12. 1 by 2 can also be written as 7 by 14. So there are plenty of ways by which you can write 1 by 2. We can also write 1 by 2 as 10,000 divided by 20,000. So basically if you keep writing it in more number of ways, you will get more and more rational numbers that would exist between 1 by 2 and 1. So when we say between 0 and 1, you actually have infinite number of rational numbers. Right? So this very clearly proves that there exists infinite number of rational numbers between any two rational numbers. Because the beauty of rational number is that it is the ratio of two numbers. So it can be represented in a plenty of ways. Now let us try this exercise. Find 20 rational numbers between minus 3 and 1. So we have minus 3 here and we have 1 here. So in between these we have to find out 20 rational numbers. So how do we do that? Now some very commonly seen rational numbers between these are minus 2, minus 1, 0 because these are also rational numbers. So we already found 3 and we have to find a total of 20. So let's see how can we do this. Now minus 3. How can we write minus 3? It can be written as minus 3 by 1 and this can be written as minus 30 by 10. Right now, let's start from minus 30 by 10. So this this is minus 30 by 10. Now, if we want to move this side, so what will happen? What what is what is the number that would come immediately after this? It would be minus 29 by 10, then minus 28 by 10, minus 27 by 10. So we are gradually coming towards minus 2. So minus 26 by 10. And like this, it will reach till 0. So gradually minus 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, then 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 1. And like that, it will reduce till 0. And again, after 0, it will be like 1 by 10, then 2 by 10, 
and like that it will again reach up to 8 by 10, 9 by 10, 10 by 10. So this 10 by 10 would actually be 1. So we have to find out numbers between minus 30 that means starting from here till here. All these numbers lie between minus 3 and 1. Right? So we had to find 20 numbers. So you can select any 20 numbers from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we have just put dotted marks. So you just fill the numbers and you can pick any 20 numbers. So 20 is a very small number. Actually there are infinite numbers existing between minus 3 and 1. You want to see how the same minus 3 can also be written as minus 300 by 100. And then you can actually have minus 299 by 100, minus 298 by 100, minus 297 by 100 and so on till you reach 0. And then even after 0 you will have 1 by 100, 2 by 100, 3 by 100 and this will reach up to 100 by 100, before 100 by 100 that is 99 by 100. So any number that would lie between this and this they all lie between minus 3 and 1 again. So infinite numbers exist like this. So it is very important whenever you are calculating or whenever you are trying to locate rational numbers between any two numbers, it is very important that the denominators of both the lower and the upper boundaries must be the same. Now here what is the lower boundary? Here the lower boundary is minus 3. What is the upper boundary? That is 1. And if you see the denominator of both of them is 1. Minus 3 is minus 3 by 1. 1 again is 1 by 1. So their denominators are the same. So it is very important that their denominators remain the same. Only then you will be able to locate rational numbers like this. For example here also we have done minus 3. We have written minus 3 as minus 30 by 10. So in this case we found out all numbers between minus 30 by 10 and 10 by 10. So we have ensured that the denominator remains the same for the for both the lower and the upper boundaries. So this is the technique that we will use to locate rational numbers between any two rational numbers. So let us do another exercise. Find 5 rational numbers between 1 by 4 and 3 by 8. So here you see this is our lower boundary, this is the upper boundary and they both have different denominators. Now we will have to ensure that both of them have the same denominator. So how do we ensure that? So for that purpose what we will do is, so the lower boundary is 1 by 4. So what we do, we multiply the numerator and denominator by 2. Now since we are multiplying both numerator and denominator, so that's the same thing. So it, it's like the, in, the total value is not affected. So this becomes 2 by 8. So now my lower limit is 2 by 8 and what is my upper limit? My upper limit is 3 by 8. So basically between 2 by 8 and 3 by 8, I will have to find out 5 rational numbers. Now how will you find out between 2 by 8 and 3 by 8? Now let's see. So the 2 by 8 can be written as 20 by 80. Right? And 3 by 8 can be written as 30 by 80. So we have to find out numbers, 5 numbers between 20 by 80 and 30 by 80. So we can write it as 21 by 80, 22 by 80, 23 by 80, 24 by 80, 25 by 80, 26 by 80 and so on till 29 by 80. So all these numbers, they lie between 2 by 8 and 3 by 8. Or we can say they all lie between 1 by 4 and 3 by 8. So based on whatever we have studied so far, let us try to look at some of the questions. Represent 7 by 4 on the number line. Now when you look at it, what is the denominator? It is 4. So what have we learned that on the number line, whatever the denominator is, we divide each segment into those many equal parts. Let's say if this is 0, 1, 2 and so on. And this side you have minus 1, minus 2 and so on. So what we do is we divide this section between 0 to 1 into 4 equal parts because 4 is the denominator. So let's say 1, 2, 3 and 4. So similarly we divide every segment into 4 equal parts like this. 
Now, why we are not doing it on the other side is this is a positive rational number. So it will obviously exist somewhere on this side. Okay. So now what would be this first point? It is one part out of four parts. So this will be one by four. This is two by four. This is three by four. This one is nothing but four by four. This is five by four. This is six by four. This is seven by four. And this two is again nothing but eight by four. So where is 7 by 4 here? So this is how we locate or represent 7 by 4 on the number line. Question number 2. Represent minus 2 by 11 minus 5 by 11 minus 9 by 11 on the number line. So again let us follow the same technique. So we draw the number line. This is 0. This is 1. This is 2. This side this is minus 1. This is minus 2 and so on. So here what is the denominator? The denominator is 11. So here we will divide each segment into 11 equal parts. So here let's divide it into 11 equal parts. So we will divide it like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So like this you have divided it into 11 equal parts. So similarly we will do it on the other side as well because this time it is a negative rational number so it will lie on this side itself. So let's divide it into 11 equal parts. So this is how we have divided it into 11 equal parts. So let us now start uh, locating the points. So this is 0. So what would be this point? This is one part out of 11 parts. So this would be minus 1 by 11. The next point would be minus 2 by 11. The next point would be minus 3 by 11. So this would be 4 by 11. This would be 5 by 11. This would be 6 by 11, 7 by 11, 8 by 11, 9 by 11. This would be 10 by 11 and finally this would be 11 by 11. That is 1. So we had to locate 2 by 11, 5 by 11, and 9 by 11. So these are the three points on the number line. So this is the technique how you locate rational numbers on number line. Question number three. Write five rational numbers which are smaller than two. So here again let's draw the number line just to give you an easier view. So if this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three, this is 4. Similarly, this side you have minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on. So you have to find out 5 rational numbers which are smaller than 2. So anything that is smaller than 2 and is a rational number should do. So very clearly looking at this you can see that 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. These are rational numbers smaller than 2. Anyways you will have more rational numbers between them. But these are, these are also rational numbers. They are integers but all integers are rational numbers. So these are also rational numbers. So we can say that these are the rational numbers which are smaller than 2. Question number 4. Find 10 rational numbers between minus 2 by 5 and 1 by 2. So again in this case if you look at it the lower limit and the upper limit they have different denominators. So first of all we have to change their denominator in such a way that both of them have same denominator. So how do we do that? So on one side we have minus 2 by 5, the other side we have 1 by 2. Now what is it that if we multiply to the denominator of both, we will get the same denominator. So for example if we multiply this by 2 and multiply this by 5, what will happen? Both of this will become 10, so my purpose will be solved. So what we do, we multiply both numerator and denominator by 2. So this becomes minus 4 by 10. Similarly, here also we multiply both numerator and denominator by 5, so we get 5 by 10. So now our lower limit is minus 4 by 10 and our upper limit is 5 by 10. So now let's say if this is the number line, you have minus 4 by 10 somewhere here, you have 5 by 10 somewhere here, maybe 0 somewhere in between the two. So what are the numbers that would be located between minus 4 by 10 and 5 by 10? So you see minus 4 by 10, after that you will have minus 3 by 10, minus 2 by 10, minus 1 by 10, 
then 0 by 10 which is 0, then 1 by 10, 2 by 10, 3 by 10, 4 by 10, 5 by 10. So you see between 4 by 10 and 5 by 10 you could find 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 rational numbers we already found but we needed 10. So for that what we can do minus 4 by 10 can be written as minus 40 by 100. So therefore anything that comes in between these that is minus 39 by, 4, by 100, minus 38 by 100, minus 37 by 100. So you continue like this till you reach 0 and then you cross 0 and you finally reach 49 by 100 and then 50 by 100. So you leave these two, in between these two you have so many numbers. So just pick any two out of these and that's how you get 10 rational numbers between minus 2 by 5 and 1 by 2. I hope this was useful. My advice would be that even after watching this video, try a few questions by yourself. Not just by watching the video, but try to do it on your own and I'm sure you'll be able to do it. So in the next video, we are going to learn about a very important, slightly more complex topic that is how to find out rational numbers between two given rational numbers. So be with us.